So now let's take a look at getting our selection started, and to do this we're going to use channels. Um, now channels are a tab that are usually found in with your layers. I've got them off screen here, I'm going to bring them on over and drop them in here with my layers. There we are. So we've got our layers there, we've got our channels here. Now every image is composed of a series of channels which describe the color and contrast information for the image. This image, as we can see from the information up at the top here, this is the file name, this is the zoom level, this is which layer is selected, and then we've got um, that it's an RGB image 8 bits. Um, that RGB indicates that this is an image that currently is being represented by a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And if we look over here in our channels, you'll see that we have RGB, which represents what the picture looks like with all channels put together. And then we have our red channel, our green channel, and our blue channel. And you see that as I select those, we get different representations of the image in grayscale. Those grayscale images are simply showing us how much of each type of color are in different parts of the image. So for example, if we take a look at this gentleman's coat, he's got a lot of blue in it, and if we look at our blue channel, the coat is really pretty bright. Now that same coat doesn't have very much red in it, so if we were to select our red channel, you'll see that the coat is really quite dark there. Now white, um, in, in the additive color scheme, which is what our, our computer screens use and what this image uses, RGB, um, white is a combination of maximum values of red, green, and blue. So you'll notice that in each of these different channels, white is always completely white, as bright as it can be. It's maxed out. Um, but this blue channel looks pretty nice to me when I take a look at it here, just because when I select blue, there's a lot of blue in this image, and we can really sort of get an outline of this of this sea captain, um, as opposed to some of these other channels where we have sort of darker shades that kind of mix together a bit. This blue one really stands out. So let's use our blue channel as the basis for making a selection. To do that, I'm going to make a copy of the blue. You see, we're going to actually modify what this grayscale image looks like. And if we just modified it here, this is actually part of the image. This red, green, and blue channel, these are part of the image. If we change the blue channel, it will actually affect how the blues in this image look. So we're going to make a copy of it. That way, if we change the channel, we haven't really changed what the image looks like. So I'm going to drag this blue channel down to the new channel icon down here at the bottom of the screen and now we have a blue copy. It's a channel but we're using the RGB color space so RGB only looks at the red, green, and blue channels to determine what the image looks like. This blue copy channel Photoshop just ignores that when it draws the final image but it's here for our use. So remember how I said that when we make a layer mask it's just a grayscale image where Black represents what's hidden, and white represents what's shown, and shades of gray are sort of in between. Well, here we have a grayscale image where we have sort of pretty dark but not quite black around our background, and kind of light grayish and white representing what we want selected, if we were to assume that we want to cut this guy out of his background. So that's pretty close. We couldn't use this grayscale image as a layer mask because obviously there's too much being partially hidden and too much being partially shown. But if we can drive apart the grays and the whites and the blacks in this image, then this grayscale image could then be used to create a layer mask, which would become a selection of our guy. It sounds complicated, don't worry. It's not. I'm just going to use a levels adjustment. So let's go up to image, adjustments, levels. And of course it comes somewhere off the screen. You'll see that the channel that we're modifying is blue copy, and here's a histogram of our levels. I won't explain all of this now, um, but basically how this works is if we bring our blacks over this way, the black areas get darker, and if we bring our white point over this way, our whites get brighter. So you can see what's happening in the corresponding image. Blacks get darker, whites get brighter. And we can also shift our definition of gray, but we probably want to leave that back at 1. There we go. Now at this point I can just play around with my black and white points here. Um, so if I bring the black up again, that background gets nice and dark, and I'm really just looking for a good contrast between the guy and the background, uh, between something gray and something completely black. And then I'll go over here and bring down the whites until the guy becomes completely white. Something like that, and I've still got a little too much gray up in here, so I'll bring my black point back up again. We'll just make that nice and dark. Okay, that looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And at this point, it's it's certainly not perfect. Um, remember that layer masks want us to do things in white that we're going to show and things in black that we're going to hide. 
and we, we can see here in white the outline of the sailor, so that's good, but we've also got all this other junk. The thing is, using channels has gotten us really close. This stuff is incredibly easy to get rid of. I'll just get out my polygonal lasso tool, and the regular lasso tool works just as well. And I'll just click and click and click, and you see this is a very easy selection to make. I'm going outside of my image area here, coming across and coming back in, double click to finish the selection. That's an easy selection to make, much easier than it would be to cut out this whole sailor. And now I can press Shift Backspace, which on a Mac would be Shift Delete. That brings up my Fill Dialog box. I can select Black and click OK, and all of that junk just goes away. I'll press Control D or go up to my Select menu and choose Deselect to get rid of the selection. Now I've got just a little bit more to clean up here, so I'll get out my Zoom tool. Click and drag over an area to zoom in, or I can also hold down Control Plus to zoom in and Control Minus to zoom out, as I'm doing now. Hold Control Plus, zoom in here. We'll get out our brush tool. We'll paint with white. And I'll make sure I've got a hard-edged brush. I'm, I'm right-clicking, by the way, on the background to bring up this box. Give it a little smaller diameter. That brush size looks good. I'll just paint in white. These are areas that I know are, are clearly within the outline of my sailor, so they're very easy to paint in. So I can just kind of look over the guy and these, again, don't really require a whole lot of accuracy. You can do these very quickly and very easily. And then you'll see there's a little bit of extra up here, so I'll switch my foreground and background color, and I'll just paint black over that little bit right there. And that's it. Now I've got my cutout basically already made. At this point, I can load this directly as a selection. Photoshop has the ability to take a channel and to load it as a selection directly for you. So I can hold down my control key, which I'm doing now, and I can click on blue copy, and you'll see you'll see how there's a sort of a hand with a little square around it. If I let go of control, it just becomes a regular pointer. But if I hold control, it becomes this selection tool. And if I click, boom, instantly, I've got a selection. I can do this another way as well. Press Control D to remove the selection. I can go up to Select, Load Selection. It brings up this dialog box and says, what do you want to load as a selection? And I've got blue copy uh, selected as my channel. And I want to create a new selection with it. And so we'll just go ahead and hit OK. And same thing, there's my selection. At this point, I can go back into RGB mode. You'll notice that selection stays active. Go back over to my layers. I've got my background layer here. I'm going to double click on it because right now it's a locked background layer. It's not capable of holding transparency. A um, little bit complicated, kind of goofy, but we'll just double click. We'll name it layer zero. Click OK. Lock goes away. Now I can add transparency. And I'm just going to add a layer mask. We talked before about how we could add a layer mask and then we could paint on it with a black brush or a white brush to show and hide things. Well, we've already got a selection made. So when we choose layer mask, we actually get that selection already placed as a layer mask on our layer mask thumbnail. And you can see the image here. If I hold down the Alt key, that's Option on a Mac, and I click on that layer mask thumbnail, it gives us a preview of what the layer mask itself looks like, and you'll see it looks just like our channel. And I'll hold Alt and click again to go back to what our real image looks like. So now you see that what we've done with our black and white image has in fact become a cutout of the guy, and this grid represents transparency.